as soon as like I'm ready, I just go just so that we, you never know. Like, cause I usually start like candid with people and sometimes that's like the best conversation. Yeah. I looked at your stuff. It looks like you, you do some heavy editing and some graphics and stuff like that. So <laughs> I wouldn't call it heavy editing, but yeah. it's like, I don't <laughs> just, I do the bare minimum aside from just throwing it up there. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, I basically, it's like, I'll take this. If there's anything that's like, super lagging or something or like if if there's like actual screw-ups technically i'll try to edit those out and mm -hmm. then other than that i'll just like add in like an intro and an outro and that's about it when, when it comes to the podcast or like talking interviewing people these are the easiest things to get content out there because it's like right. i just front load write the scripts ask the questions and, I, and then i'm done as opposed to trying to write a script for like the other videos then it's like oh now i have to edit it no one's going to care unless i put graphics up there <laughs> actual stats or something and then i'll post it and be like ah that's technically last year's numbers like uh, people are going to notice and they're going to be pissed off right they're going to call you out on the internet yeah. yeah exactly no one's done that yet i've like tried to correct things like i made a video about alan moore and i was wrong about something and i was like the internet's going to get me real fast on this one but so far no one's no one said the, anything the internet has no problem being wrong as long as it makes them right so yeah exactly <laughs> that's that's the truth no one cares yeah as long if it doesn't fit their agenda then they'll be mad right, right. as long as it fits their narrative well let's do it like no problem <laughs> luckily i'm like who my viewers i guess i fit their narrative i'm not big enough yet to where i have real haters on the internet you know like i don't like start controversy so no one tries to start it with me yet but right. i'm pr i'm pretty sure that pretty soon like once i start hitting 2000 followers and i start posting like my thoughts or something right. like like tyler you know like if i started saying like here's how <laughs> i feel about this stuff people will come at me no one cares like we just like the discourse you know that's what the internet's all about yeah yeah my show gets no views uh, even though i talk to some of the biggest creators on comic level up and I know. Not, I don't understand it. I watch them and I'm just oh, like, a lot of people watch them. Like the creators watch them. I get messages from creators all the time. Thank you for having Phil Hester on or whatever. You, uh, but you got to spark controversy. Right. I've got to just you, say, why were you a piece of crap in 1998 in this wizard magazine? <laughs> yeah. Or you can do like the slight that I do. Like you'll notice that like if I, I originally did just post like my, you know, max interviews with blah, blah, blah. Right. Unless someone's looking up that person's name or my yeah. name, which no one is, no one finds it. But if I post, you know, I just, you know, exaggerate one little thing we talk about where it's like if we talked about, you know, how they did something, then I can post a video as how to find a publisher that, you know, pays out this much or something or right. how you can grow your audience by 30,000. And then people actually will like click on it. You know, unfortunately, that's the world we live in where everything is about the like chemical dopamine of like and, can this make my life better immediately you know or something yeah and then you got to follow the strict rules right you you gotta when they click on it you have to have that clip of what happened so they know that they're on the right video and they weren't there's all these like, right away like, yeah YouTube that's the other rules, thing. right <laughs> you you drag it out right. <laughs> not not like you personally but like anybody that like has like a like this slow buildup of the interview Okay. Yeah, if if the title is something that's not just an interview with so and so, then yeah. they're gonna be like, oh, I don't want to watch it count down and then have you guys BS for twenty minutes and then you start jumping into it. But anyway, it's it's all good. We're we're changing it up to actually this season and hopefully it'll get a little better because I realize that I don't really advertise it that we go through someone's history of comics. And though that may not be interesting for you and me, but when I have like a Phil Hester on or one of these bigger guys like. I know I'd watch that, right? I want to hear the history. Like, I don't care about what he's doing now. I want to talk about his Green Arrow run, you know? No, exact. that's exactly <laughs> what I want to look for. And that's, right. I'm the same way. If I bring right. someone on, I'm like, I want to tell me about the the gap that we don't, how did you go from this book right. to Green Arrow? <laughs> and like, what was the, you know, exactly. Like, those are the things that, because that's kind of, it's just like, I want to know what you were doing in your point of the career kind of in the window of where i am you know i'm less you know care about where you are now because you're you know you've had 10 de you know over a decade of you know 
being six quote unquote uh, successful or whatever, you know, and it's like, I want to know how you got to, you cross the chasm into that realm, you know? By the way, I apologize. Uh, or you, you edit this, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I, I don't know if this guy sure offends you. I know half, half the people are mad at them, half not. I'm not sure your camp. I just happen to be wearing this shirt today. It's interesting. <laughs> it, it, we can off, I guess off yeah. camera, we can talk about it. I have been in the camp that has been favorable uh, for them you were for early a long on, time. I think Rob, it's probably because you were early on, right? I was you early were, on and I was yeah. one of their bi biggest successes early on. And so right, like, sure. I just like, for me, it was all gold. All gravy, right? You know? and, like, <laughs> and then I started like realizing, you know, Charlie Stickney was the editor of my book. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. And David Byrne was like, co-publisher at the time so right. the, and uh i you know i didn't maybe realize you know what was going on behind the scenes at the time you know and mm -hmm. like now it's years later and a lot's changed and it's like oh yeah i guess uh i don't know but you, everybody has different experiences yeah, but I, it is it's I, like I, it's i will I'm say this it. every publisher it's like it, you're you're not it's you're dealing it's dealing with people you know, right. like, and, and, and scout is just like anywhere else where it's like, you, they don't have one point man that you can really blame things on because right. they don't have like one, like every person has a different editor and that, and, and it's kind of like no one there is, and just like it, most other publishers, except for yeah. the really big ones, is that like their full-time job is dedicated to you and six other books. And all they do is this and that they all have a million things going on and their least of their worries is who's this one creator of the right. 40 I have to deal with have to say about this thing. And they're dealing with delays all the time and right. they're all copying in, but it, it's not just scout. Every publisher I've worked with has been the same. Oh yeah. They're, they're all a mess. You know, everyone I've dealt with, I just, I know that some people have very bad stuff and I try not to wear this unless I know. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I don't know anything really bad. Uh, so and to me, I still hype them. Uh, so I, I'm still happy with, you know, I've actually my experience. Been, my friends have been screwed over and I agree with others screwed over and I've seen it. I've actually been pretty fortunate, but it's because I do one shots there. It's, it's a different animal, right? All yeah, I was going to say how, uh, is you have two is uh you have two Grand Estate punks right? It's like right, but they're one, one shot. shots, and then I have more coming out this this year. But because they're all number ones, my numbers aren't really dropping. Like I'm not yeah, you just not, you, you get the, the, the hype. Yeah, have, you right? don't get to see that downward trend like the rest <laughs> of us. I mean, there's there's a downward trend, but it's not it's not as bad, right? It's yeah. it's like a ten percent drop or twenty percent drop versus. The fifty percent drop, and then the twenty, you know. <laughs> but the the coven or the second ones with Scout too, as well. Yeah, yeah, the new ones oh, okay. that are coming out are with Scout too. I okay, I, I wasn't sure if you like went on your own or um. No, 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 no. They're still with Scout. I just uh, I in my contract, I made sure I could do Kickstarter first. I mean, they're expensive books, so I, I need to fundraise them. What's been your experience like between them versus Band of Bards or? Uh, I mean, Band of Bards pays me to do stuff, so that's good. Oh well, well <laughs> I get I get I get paid to do my book. one pays me, the other one does. No, <laughs> right, right. I well, meaning like they pay me to make the book as well. Oh, as so that is oh okay, gotcha. And I own it, so so very very good in that respect. However, they also are very scared of the internet. So Tyler pissing people off one day also gets Tyler removed from a book, and that book is delayed. So there's. There's shifts and battles. Like Scout wouldn't have cared. Scout would have looked at it and been like, "Oh, people are mad on the internet. Let's if this is still a problem in three days, we'll address it." Versus like immediately the world is ending. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is wild. Actually, I will say though, like I didn't know Band of Bards until that controversy. Right, honestly. most people didn't. <laughs> it, it, um, <laughs> and but at the same time, yeah, I don't know. I'm not like most people to where I don't. Uh, I just see it as like, oh, dang it. Like, that sucks. You know, it's, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like for kind of everybody involved. It's not really well, they like, admit, oh. They admit like, you know, not on air, but off air. They kind of admit that, hey, we kind of did wrong. We may have jumped the gun. But we, you you know, we had a lot of the people who are in this company very, very threatened by this. So they were very offended. We weren't offended. We weren't scared about it. But we don't want to upset the whole company. Uh, yeah, it's, that was valid. It's, yeah, it's, it's stressful. If you weren't <laughs> in comics, if you were, you know, 
my <laughs> main day job is uh, managing hotel. It's like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. That kind of what? office drama is going to happen. It's just like, we kind of have to appease the customer, you know, right. or <laughs> in this case, the customer is other creators and, you know, you just cut your losses or whatever. And uh, I've, it's I've not- actually, f- if you're in it long enough and you're cool with people, even after they slightly screw you over in, in scenarios like that, you it can still work out in the long run as long as you don't hold it again like i don't think i i don't even uh follow i didn't follow tyler's response to that at, at all so i don't know if he like you know lashed out or not yeah. or even on the internet or anything but i mean he lashed out at individual people who attacked him but he didn't lash out on the company in fact he gave up his ownership of it and let me publish it continue with with band of bards so he allowed me to find a new artist because we co-created yeah i saw that he like yeah he was like cool he was just like nothing to do with travis really nothing to do with band of bards so yeah it was really just like screw these people that got me yeah yeah so yeah he's like that that seems like the way to go yeah it's it sucks because it still like pushes the controversy uh but you know yeah, I, although he he does that with, I feel like he does that with any. I've actually tried to have him on. He hasn't responded. I think he's just like in his world, and that's his world, uh, yeah. you know. And, and it's just like uh, more power actually, to him because we all pay attention to it. <laughs> if you go to his site right now, he's actually removed all of his content because he uh, he went too far. He uh, he finally got burnt, so he had to, he had to scrape his stuff. He uh, attacked Eric July a little bit. And um, oh, oh, no, let me revise. He went that. after he, the king or whatever. That let, like, yeah, he, let me revise that. He didn't go after the king. He refused to oh, go he after defended the king. Him? I don't. Yeah, he didn't defend him necessarily, but he wouldn't go after him. And then there's this guy named Clipaverse. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. No, but this dude is in psycho. He's a psycho. He goes aggressively against Eric July, like every day. Post whatever Eric July did, like just aggressive to this guy. Goes through his businesses leaves notes like this guy is aggressive and like pretends like he beats his wife on camera like it's part of a joke like it's not funny <laughs> so but, crazy like one shirt in get, those games right he'll it's get, so extreme it's so crazy that people like dedicate their lives to just hate on someone that's <laughs> not you know it's like i get you okay it's like we're that's what's interesting about this world it's like this you know indie comics it's like from a grand grand scheme right it's the tiniest pond of all the big ponds right. that matter but for some reason because this pond has such a ripple effect on all of entertainment it's like the yeah. pinnacle of little dramas amongst all, all of us and uh, and it's like it's not like that in everything else you know like if you pay attention to skateboarding or anything like there's right. dramas but it's not like this i don't know like i feel like it's like way more extreme with like just youtube in general like the, right. the indie comic community on youtube specifically the people that are politically driven right. it's like that's a whole nother game i just it's can't bad. so funny that uh he's in he's in the middle of that now and that did oh yeah he got scared he removed everything on facebook because he they were like threatening to go to his house and like he's seen videos of them doing it he's like i don't want to be and they involved his kids like so he was yeah, like well, you know that's what? the thing is once you <laughs> i had somebody uh, it's kind of a weird st- story but basically like i had a, a friend that basically kind of was exaggerating on twitter um mm-hmm. about just like being just being a weird person i kind of yeah. and like it was just like joking just like oh i love uh I don't know, uh, uh, just kind of weird stuff, weird right. videos. And once he even just like joked about it once, the people that really are into those extremes, they pull you into their realm and yeah. they never let you go. And yeah. like, then it was just like, he was just drug into now the ultimate extremes of the internet. And, and uh, yeah, they found, and like, it wasn't like evil to where they were trying to destroy his life. It was more just like, Hey, I thought you were, I thought you were a weirdo like me. Like, come yeah. join us, do this weird stuff. He's like, no, I was joking, you know? Right. <laughs> right. And I mean, they'll go through archives and archives of everything you've ever said on the internet. Be like, remember this one time that you said this horrible thing? Yeah, I was 16 and I was at a park. I apologize. <laughs> you know, oh, I man. I, to... yeah, I, yeah, I get nervous it. for the future of like right. what's the oh, first. Yeah. It's like, A, <sighs> yeah, everything. I would have been canceled. I yeah, it's like it. any as soon as they want to go after us, like it's over. I like right. especially like whenever um 
uh, a few years back, like whenever people were just like pulling anybody that was like involved with uh, the QAnon stuff or whatever, sure. those guys were going deep. And it's like, mm -hmm. if you said like, I did, uh, you know, anything associated with uh, a certain school or a certain person or pizza or and like you just make like jokes like they could just be like who are you friends with this person who's friends with this person with this person and i'm just like oh man like i hope that i am not accidentally associated with somebody <laughs> right. that's been involved with this kind of stuff did you have pizza in washington dc one time you also you're done uh. killing children. <laughs> <laughs> did you post it yeah i like I, I luckily am like technology technologically bad i'm like right. de like delayed on everything like i know just enough to like put my comics online and post stuff but i'm actually really bad at social media i can barely use my smartphone and, and it's like so I, you know, may like accidentally post emojis that don't mean <laughs> what I thought they meant. You know, I'm that behind to where it's just like, I don't realize eggplants mean something other than eggplants. Eggplants, right. A lot of people like eggplants on the internet. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I, uh, I guess I'll jump into yeah, let's do it. some of my questions for you. I, I was really just like, it's, it, I have been following you for about as long as I've been professionally doing this because you and I were both a part of comics launch in like 2017, 18. Right, Does that yeah, sound yeah. right? And because like oh, we were both right. were kind of, and you were starting to promote, um, broke down the first one. Right. And, uh, yeah. and so you and I kind of have been like, rising together and it's been kind of interesting this is like i i've never really reached out or anything like that but so now but i've been watching your content and i was like oh it, it seems like this should be the year where I, I get him on so i was basically just gonna be like i'll tell you what i know of your career and you fill in the gaps and then i'll ask sure. questions <laughs> yeah that sounds uh, good yeah I, i've also followed your career too you know i, I remember when you got the scout gig and i was like damn how do you get a scout gig before me like all, all the all the little things that aren't real like competitive you know but just like, oh man, yeah but yeah it was just little things like that which i was like oh how do you do it all right what's he doing you know and i pay attention for a little bit and then i get distracted because i'm doing a thousand things and then well that's what's interesting i think we're gonna find out now like what each of us are doing in the nitty gritty right. that's like the kind of questions i have but it, it is fun yeah i'm like as you say that i'm just like nominated for ringo right right exactly you know, like, <laughs> it's just like level up after level up straight competition right. but yeah I'll, I'll yeah so it's like um let's just say roughly five years ago it's like started doing comics launch for those that don't know comics launch aside from watching my own content that is the best i've never i've taken online courses for all kinds of stuff stuff that costs thousands of dollars to learn how to swing trade and investing and stuff and his comics launch courts is like one of the most like practical easy to follow like hands-on guidance for how to like the business side of selling almost anything and it's specifically tailored to crowdfunding comics on kickstarter um so if people don't know that it, it's it, yeah it's still around he's still is doing stuff i know that you, he's still doing a podcast i don't know why he doesn't do youtube do you know why Tyler? I mean, or, um, yeah, I don't think he does YouTube. Sometimes he'll uh, he'll simultaneous broad broadcast like Streamyard, but it's not like uh, it's not the important part. The podcast. Yeah, it's definitely not his. Like, yeah, it's like he might post something a podcast that he did on YouTube, but right. it's not like his main play. I guess he whatever he's doing is working. So, uh, uh, but yeah, it's my main like place that I follow everything is YouTube. That's okay. why like I don't post much on Twitter. Um, I don't post that much on instagram but youtube that's where i'm watching everything so that's where i decide to post everything so like to me it's like that that's the world like even so yeah you also run a discord i'm part of that but that's the same thing where it's like i'm so rarely on discord i have to remind myself to get on this yeah. you know and then once you get back on you're so behind on reading everything it's almost like i can't catch up well, so yeah you do youtube you have a discord you have multiple crowdfunded books. You've you've crowdfunded successfully, I think, every book you've ever done for the past Correct. like four or five years, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm at 20. It, with just Orange Cone, I'm at 24. If you count the extended stuff, I'm at over 30. 
And you and that so that's led to over six figures in revenue from the comics. That's revenue, right? Or is that profit? It would, no, it'd be revenue because you got to pay for printing and stuff. Like yeah, that. So okay, but the, regardless, like you, yeah. you're, you're crushing it in in that world. So I um, just did the math yesterday for um, for an email that someone said, and I um, oh, I just hit a little over three hundred k. Whoa, crushing! Well done. So yeah, Thank okay. You. So fill me in on um. Was there anything I missed? Like, was there something you did before comics launch? Did you do any web yeah. comics or anything like that? I know that you you, know, you did stuff like a decade prior to recently. So fill me in on that on on everything before like five years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, in two thousand, from two thousand two thousand three, I live in Orlando. I still live near Orlando, but um, I went to film school. That was my dream. You know, I went from graduate. I graduated in nineteen ninety eight, and I went straight down here to to go to film school. Um, did and you I go to UCF, the, the University um, of Florida? I graduated from UCF, but I did not go to UCF. I went to something called FMU, which, so uh, where are you from? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, which is where I still am, although I've lived in other places. So in New, I don't know about Missouri, but in New England, we have colleges and then we have tech, tech colleges. They're, they're separate. We know exactly what they are. Or Do you know the same? Yeah, I, I, we have essentially the same thing, but okay. I guess... Are you referring when you say tech colleges, like people that study like. Like nursing, uh, you go for nursing or yes, you go okay, for. Yeah, like, we have the same uh, thing here in the Midwest. For auto mechanics, you go for a specific trade. You yeah, a, a, a technical degree. college. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why? Would, yeah, we call them technical colleges. Yeah, yeah. Well, in Florida, there's a third option. Uh, hence why Trump University is here. Not to make it political, but that's why it was here. Uh, there is uh, an unaccredited college where you go. For, I don't know why. So I was not aware when I moved here because I had no plan <laughs> that I, that you could go to a school where it would mean nothing. <laughs> no <laughs> way. A, yeah. So I went to that. Luckily, at the end of my degree, uh, I don't remember the president at the time, but one of the presidents was like, hey, we shouldn't have that. UCF bought the student base. So I have a UCF degree, but that's just luck because I went to no way. Program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, like it it messed me up because I come from New Hampshire. I choose Florida because I'm like, uh, I don't want to go to California. There's too much competition. I don't want to go to New York because, because uh, again, too much competition. I'll go to the third so I can try to be a big fish in a small pond. That's what That's I want to do. That's why I right. wanted to go to Central Florida. Yeah. Right. And I was like, I'm a genius. Like, I, I was like, oh my God, like, all these guys were huge. I didn't realize that this was like because they couldn't get into UCF. Or like I was good in school. Like I could have got to any college. Like it wasn't. Yeah. I just needed to apply or got to a community college because I didn't apply at the right time. I just didn't have a plan. Like I, one of my flaws slash gifts as a person is I love people. So like if you are in my world, this is why I have all the discords that we just talked about and all the stuff is I love to interact with people on the regular. Um, like if I'm one of those guys who would have tons of friends over, the only reason why I don't is my wife is like, we're maybe in our forties, we don't need that anymore. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. But I would literally have people here all the time. I like, I love people around. So in high school, I just, you could tell me a thousand times you need to apply for these colleges, but I'll be like, yeah, do I need to apply for colleges? Guidance counselor? Because Sally broke up with Bobby and she's crying. So I got to deal with that. You need to get your parents straight. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, I, I was... I w wouldn't say the opposite, but I was just like, uh, I was in my mind for some reason, whenever I was in high school, I was like the only guy that it cared. Uh, there was me and like five guys that cared about making movies yeah. or being anything creative. There was the thespians who I was just sort of associated with, but they were, they're way like the theater people are way different from filmmakers. And then of the filmmakers, like there was, you know, th most of them were kind of eccentric and I was like kind of the only one that was just like, I, uh, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to move to LA and I'm going to be a film director. Like, that's just how the world works. That's, that's just, what I want to do. <laughs> I'm the best at this school. So clearly I'm going to be the best at college and then I'll be the best in the world. And, uh, and then, yeah, I didn't get accepted to central Florida. And I, like you, I was like, I'll be the big fish in a small pond. I won't go to, you know, New York film school or to right. university of, uh, like USC or whatever the big right. ones there. I was like, I'll just settle for the middle. And then, uh, 
And then whenever I didn't get there, I went to one year of film school in Illinois. Uh, and then I quickly realized, even though like it was still a big school, University of Southern Illinois, Carbondale. Uh, right. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I suck. And like, <laughs> I was like, I'm not good. I'm and I'm no one likes me. I'm not popular. Like, I'm just going to not do this anymore. <laughs> And like, just basically, I didn't, I didn't quite drop out. I just like got a job and then my career went different, but back to you. That's just funny. Cause like, I remember like really wanting to go to university of central Florida See, and, like, I, and I was just like, yeah, like you, like I'm, I love people. I'm the best. This is how the world works. So naive. Yeah, no, I, I feel you, you know, unfortunately, cause I was in the school, like I really thought I was really good. Like every script that ever got filmed, if if there was an option for my script to be used, it was gonna be used. So I was just like, oh my God. And I'm not saying I don't have talent. Obviously I've kept data, I don't have talent. Yeah. But I don't think I had, I didn't have anybody who I felt in my peer. Like I would be like, let's talk about, you know, Cameron or talk about like uh, the directors that I loved. I was a huge Quentin fan. I loved Kevin Smith, but I, uh, I, I loved Stanley Kubrick and I would study their work. So I was just bored. Like, I remember walking out of a class once because they made me watch Rugrats. Uh, 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 not Rugrats. Um, Rugrats. What's the, okay. it's a, the black and white, like, all the kids are just kids playing. I can't think of it. He's got his hair. Alfalfa is in it. Oh, uh, uh, oh, goodness. Why am I blanking on that? The, um, the Little Rascals. Little Rascals. Yeah, he made us watch. I was like, why are we watching this? Oh, to see how black and white works. You know, we could watch. Shinner's list we can watch <laughs> that's hilarious I like, um i and i walked out i literally walked out of the class that day he tried to give me trouble but i it was just i i had such passion i just knew the stuff and it's not like i didn't learn anything there there's people who did who actually did film um i was also working at universal at the time so i got to do a lot of backlots because uh universal was, is a pretty decent company to work for if you say you have an interest in film they let me do stuff like i would work if a film set was there doing uh, filming for a commercial or whatever in one of the back lots, I could help them for the day do stuff, you know, as long as it fit in my stuff. So I, I got to do some really cool stuff about that. But uh, anyways, um, I finally, when I got to it, uh, you know, I had no money. I uh, I didn't have any credit cards. You know, I, I moved it all to live down here. My parents, I, I've been very public about it. My parents were both drug and alcohol, very heavy. Um, and then though my mom was clean, she just, they didn't have enough to really support or do anything extra. So I didn't have good credit. I didn't have anything. They used my social security number way before to get credit cards, you know, that they maxed out. Like I was, I was kind of screwed. I had no, no option. I couldn't pull the Kevin Smith, you know, get maxed out a whole bunch of credit cards to make a movie. Yeah. Uh, so I, I loved comics. I've always loved comics. In fact, my, in my original plan, I was always going to fall back. My plan was to make movies so comics would go in because growing up i don't know about you but i didn't know how to break into comics there was no there's no roadmap to break into comics no. wizard magazine didn't tell you how to do that we just got a bunch of names of these guys at the top oh okay <laughs> like i didn't know how to do it so to this day my... there's no uh, hobby right. <laughs> uh so i did it and then i went to megacon a few years and i um i i, I would always buy all the independent books because I buy so many books and I still do to this day. You know, uh, I spend about just because one about sixty dollars a week. <laughs> Damn. With a thirty percent discount, so it's a big stack. And then, as you know, and everyone knows, I I am over a thousand backers on Kickstarter. Oh yeah. Most of it's physical. Like I I love comics and I buy a lot of independent stuff. And I I met a guy named St Stephen Nielsen. He did a book called Government Bodies. Government. It was very much like Pulp Fiction. They kind of look like Pulp Fiction. Uh, and that's where it kind of broke down came from because it's like, I want to kind of rip off Pulp Fiction too. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but he said, hey, if you can get me a four page backup, I could do it. So I contacted a friend in high school. Hey, can you do, do a four page backup? We did a four page backup on that. That led to another four page backup. And I started getting into forums of digital web. And so I was doing small little projects uh, here and there. I then got to uh, my biggest success back then was Negative Burn. Are you familiar with Negative yeah. Burn? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Neil, for those who don't who listen to this, that's where Neil Gaiman cut his teeth and Alan Moore cut his teeth and Brian Michael Bendis. All the greats were there. Not in the years that I was there, but <laughs> before me, all the greats were there. So it was such a 
such a big deal to be in that. It had the image logo. Uh, so I was like, oh my God, I'm in Image Comics. It's a, I don't talk about it. You don't hear me talk about it very often because I don't like, I don't want someone to research and go, you say you're in Image Comics. No, you did eight pages in an anthology series that got canceled right after your, your, your issue. You, like, were the fi- you were the final season of that. And that no, yeah, that's funny. But hey, I, w- you're still in Image. It doesn't matter. Right, right. It's an anthology. I, I use it to get to cons. Like, I'll put it on my con applications. Like, yeah, hey, you can still say you were a part of the same book as Neil Gaiman or the same series. I would. Right. <laughs> it's all about yeah. that internet credibility, baby. Right. So I, I use it. I just, uh, the, the internet, uh, you know, will call you out if you, 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 you buff up too much. So if, I, yeah, I if you were it. bragging about it and like you're, and yeah, if you were an asshole about it, it'd be different, but you're not. <laughs> so, um, as I'm doing all these things, um, I do what most men do and, um, I, uh, have sexual intercourse with women. Uh, <laughs> and one of those, uh, was a one night stand and, uh, gave me a child, gave my, my first child, which is uh, my daughter, Allison. Um, and I had written a comic at the time and we had done two pages, uh, two issues of it, which is broke down, by the way, we had two issues done in 2007. Uh, but I, I decided to be a dad. I couldn't be, I couldn't do both. I couldn't be a dad and do comics. I didn't have the support system. Uh, cause I, uh, we broke up very quickly after we got together, me and the mom. So I was a single dad raising my daughter and I wasn't, uh, I'm, I'm not one of those guys who break up and. I had every other weekend or whatnot. I had every other week. I, I had 50% custody and I, I did 50% custody. So I, I single was a single father. And because of my background, the stuff that I shared earlier, being a dad was more important to me than anything. So I oh, didn't yeah, want to mess that up. So I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to do comics. Uh, my dreams are over. I uh, I give up. Uh, I had a good run. <laughs> um, Hey, at least that. like your your short run was like a, a pretty solid high. Right, it was a good end. It was a good end. Uh, but I'm glad I did. I mean, imagine if I made broke down and then because the the past success that was before Kickstarter, the past yeah. success there was literally spend tons of money to go to as many cons as possible and hope one day Marvel and DC is there, so you can handle the copy and they caught you. It's like that, yeah, that I think about plan. that where it's just like. <laughs> We have it so easy now. <laughs> we right, act like was, it's so hard, but it's like it's like we don't have to travel the country trying to tour the world with our comic book, you know. Right. You know, you talk about I know you've had Charlie Signey on the show. Charlie's a good friend of mine. And uh, you said earlier uh, he edited your book. You know, Charlie Signey, though he may not get into Marvel if you send him an email, but I promise you, if he messages all the editors at Marvel, probably five or six of them know who he is. You know, so he's already got that done. And though he's never pursued that, you know, because he's got all this credit over on the Kickstarter side because people pay attention to numbers and money. I mean, it's just facts. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. If they know yeah. who I am, they definitely know who Charlie is. Right. Exactly. Um, so so doing so I we went through that and I, I gave it up and, you know, my life went through, you know, I had a, another marriage, another divorce, you know, the typical stuff. Um, and then I, I met this wonderful woman, uh, my wife, uh, Heather, and uh, we found love, we got married and, you know, I found when I was happy again, I wanted to create again, you know? Um, yeah, so, uh, one day I just showed her the folder, I broke down four dead bodies and she pointed out, Hey, uh, it's really dumb that you have a finished comic and you, um, don't do anything with that. That's really dumb. And I was like, Yeah. That is really dumb because I still had friends who did Kickstarter as a supporter. So I knew about Kickstarter. I just, it never occurred to me that was an option for me. So, so you I, finished broke down and then just kind of sat on it. You didn't, even I didn't finish like... it. I did two, I did two issues. I did two issues. Um, and so okay, I messaged still, the original, yeah. Uh, yeah, I messaged the original artist and said, Hey, do you want to finish broke down? He's like, absolutely. Uh, so we decided to finish broke down. Um, I turned those two issues into one good issue. Uh, because you know I'm a better writer and stuff, and in between that, let me let me just share this one other thing. I never stopped creating, even even from film school to raising my daughter. Uh, I was a big LARPer. Uh, I, I did White Wolf and, and oh, live cool. action role playing. Dang, I, I, ran, I wish I got into that. I never did. Yeah, yeah I ran. That's a, you know all these games back here. I ran huge events. I mean, hundreds of people where I would run stories for them. I was telling stories the whole time. Because it's in my, it's in me. Like I need to tell stories. Like I'm not fulfilled. Uh, I'm the same. But I'll find a. But it doesn't have to be a comic. And I could tell it. I could be happy with just. I I think I need more than just a D and D table. But uh, as long as I get enough storytelling, I'll be happy and I can I can keep going. But if I don't, but you were essentially over those ten years, like 
building up your arsenal of stories to just so now you're just releasing <laughs> all yeah, that a little stuff. bit. Well, and it, it helps with the anthology stuff a lot because, you know, anthologies, you know, the, the secret of anthologies for me is making everything connect. Well, that's what you do in live action role play. Everybody makes their character. They have their backgrounds that they wrote and all these stories. And then they're in my story. But I still have to make their story matter for them to care. So yeah. that's, you know, so when I do anthologies, it's it's really easy for me to piece things together because I'm used to doing that on the regular of, all right, so this needs to fit here. And I just write this little thing in the middle and I just help their stories get better, you know? Hmm. So, yeah. So I was going to tie that into like, a, in addition to writing, you also edit. So whenever you're an editor, do you basically, because I view that as like, there's two, like I view editors the same as film producers to where an editor, there's a lot of different editor editors, just like there's a lot of different producers for films. And it's mm -hmm. like, so like one form might be you are the one who comes up with the theme or the story and then hire people to basically write or create it, whether that's a series or an anthology or whatever. And then on the other flip side, that it might be somebody else that hires you to essentially be like the project manager for a series that they have written or that they've written a treatment for that they need or something like that. So what all books have you taken on the editor role and what did that mean to you as far as what did you, you don't have to go each one, but kind of what have you done in that space that I have that might be new to the to sure. people in so our I realm. My, I consider myself a story editor and then really a proper producer. So for Orange Cone, I uh, I'm a story editor for Cthulhu Invades, uh, which was nominated for Ringo and Holiday Spirits, and those are anthologies, but they're not like traditional anthologies. There's a beginning, middle, and end, and then I have other people take on characters and they help tell that story within that beginning, middle. Oh, We've so you it. develop sort of the overall story. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a story arc that goes on. So I give them like kind of template. So like let's say I was hiring you for um Winnie the Pooh, you know, and I I would I would mark out, you know, the beginning, you know, Cthulhu invades Hundred Acre Woods. So people need to be scared, people need to lose. In the middle, Pooh Bear has rallied, you know, Eeyore and Tigger, and he's rallied these people. So you could write a story in that particular them. And then at the end. Cthulhu wins most of the time or Cthulhu stuff. It's, they're more complicated than that, but that's the basic. And then you will get assigned a character and your character, uh, you get to write that character's journey in one of those, the three act structure. Um, and then we add poems. And then I will go in at the end, once everybody does their stuff and add one or two stories that kind of are extra meat to make the other stories work. Or I'll, I'll tweak a line here or there to go, this is referencing this that happened earlier and do it. And one of the secrets of how it works that I've found, one of the greatest things about comics, so this is, if you take anything from this interview, one of the things I've learned about comics, the greatest thing is you are 100% control of time. A page could be a day, a page could be 300 years. Like it, it's, it, you're in time, you're stuff. So I add, I add poems in there and the poems have day marks. So if I say it's day 16 and day 47, that continuity doesn't need to be as, as flexible because you know 47 days have passed. Anything could happen in those 47 days. You don't know. So if, if his shirt was red in one and blue in the other because we have different artists or different art styles, it, it becomes acceptable and it kind of moves with the story and it helps. That is a smart way to do it. Well done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to do it like that. So, so it, it helps build, building that stuff. You know, uh, I, think, I think that's one of the things about storytelling when it comes to comics is figuring out how to tell stories. I mean, even, even without doing it page wise, you know, just adding like trail lines of someone walking and walking around, you're keeping them on that page long, right? Yeah. You didn't need to do it with a bunch of, of, of boxes of dialogue. You could do it with just walking because they're going to follow that line. They're just uh -huh. going to do it, which slows down the pacing of your book, which is the hardest thing in comments, right? Because you can blow through them really fast. If yeah. You know? Um, so yeah, so that's that's what I do on the Orange Cone side. So I do a couple of those. We do uh, Holiday Spirits, we do uh, Cthulhu, and then we did Hospice, which is its own animal, where I put it together, but it wasn't my animal. And what I did is I hired six, uh, well, I didn't hire, I got six of my friends who do comics at various levels and said, hey, let's do a connected universe book and we'll all launch our Kickstarter at the same time. Here's the basic plot of Hospice. Here's what it is. 
let's do it. And everyone came up with their own stories that fit in that universe. And we all just kind of put it together and, and co-created it as kind of a, kind of a writer's room, like a series, like this is a series that we're going to do. Um, so that was its own thing. And then, I liked, yeah, I, whenever I saw you hyping that, or I was like, that's a cool, interesting idea. And I, no one else has really done that before, right? Yeah, no one, as far as we can tell, no one has done a connected hospice universe, uh, connected uh, universe on Kickstarter um, that, that has everything connected with different writers. And what's cool about it and what makes it so unique with Kickstarter that you couldn't do with any other company, we didn't cross monies, right? We didn't cross pollinate. There was no cross pollinating of our funds. You got your funds, you ship out your book. You got your funds, you shipped out your book. We did do one variant cover that's all connected. All, and that wasn't trading funds. That was just going, we're going to use this printer so we know it's consistent. That's it. You know, not 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 anything strenuous. Let's just know that this cover will match this cover because we're all using the same printer. <laughs> yeah, know? it's almost like just built-in collective marketing, or, or you yeah. know, like as opposed to a large IP. Because if someone came to one of those people being like, I want to buy hospice from you, they wouldn't yeah. have any, like, there's no one person to go to. Right. right. I mean, it, but they still own the stories, too. They own that story. Yeah, they would have to buy each individual story outright from each person. Correct. Uh, so it's it's kind of interesting. And and believe it or not, we actually have a a, a publisher that's interested in it. So, like, it, it did work. It got enough interest and a publisher is interested in, in doing that. Um, because it's it's kind of a fun idea and something you can keep adding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, so on the flip side, I've done a what's called the Advocator and I did the Collective. So they're two different things. And what those were, those were books that were designed. I realized that one of the flaws that we have when we start out, you know, you start out at the same time as me. We have one book, and then we have to pay for the second issue, and most of the people on Kickstarter, the majority of them are a book a year, right? Yeah. So I was doing that math. I was like, that's five years to my trade. I am I am 40. That's not going to work out. No, <laughs> yeah. So so how can I fill my table faster? So I uh, I created the Advocator. That was uh, the thing we created. And what I did is I was like, can you give me four pages? Can you give me four pages? Can you give me four pages? All right, cool. Now we got another book. We can have it with our series so it connects with it i can promote your book you can promote my book but now i got a second book on the table to help me increase our sales it's the same reason why cthulhu invade came out i was like all right that's not working fast enough i need a trade how can i get a trade ask all my friends who are better than <laughs> to be part of this thing yeah you to... that's <laughs> i wouldn't even thought to it's just like well if i just bring everyone i know involved <laughs> Like right. you're then interconnect, like you're a whole network. You're like directly involved in, and as they're like, you're it can be everything they do is a part of what you do in a sense. Yeah, it, exactly. So it's all all interconnected. Do you and do then, this? Are you writer full time? Uh, I have a I own my own company. I own a web design company, so I I do that, but I can make my own hours. So I I am more writer now than I am web designer. Uh, but um, I, I still but still, do. yeah, that that so you're you are your own boss in every sense of the word. Yes. yes, <laughs> yes. It's, it's got, it's good and it's bad. I kind of miss uh, uh, having people like, you know, coworkers and stuff like that. My only coworker is my wife, which I love my wife, uh, but I, I'd like to yeah, have coworker be able to come home and go, Hey, look what happened today. My wife already knows what happened today. Cause you know, she was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That what, my wife works from home and yeah, I, it, as I do more of this and try to move more into full time, I'm like, Oh yeah. If we're just like at home all the time, we're going to need to like go to the gym or something or get a pool or something to somehow right. break up the day. Right. Yeah. My, my wife would love, uh, you've got that Napoleon dynamite poster behind you. She would love that. <laughs> yeah. I, it's not like I'm a huge fan of Napoleon Dynamite, but I, of course I love the movie. And like, especially back whenever I was all about indie film, like that was one of those, movies i studied like how yeah. did, you why know does how this did this work? yeah why does it work <laughs> and you know but uh so this is like one of the first posters i ever got i've just like kept it along all these years but yeah people are just like uh, are just like are you a huge napoleon Dom? anyway <laughs> i'm like no i'm not obsessed it's just the one poster i have that i really enjoy <laughs> so uh so someone liked the advocator and it was a store in orlando and they were like 
hey, can we do that for our store? So then we started producing that same thing for, for their store. And it was a, basically they were using it as a marketing piece to sell the indie comics that come from Kickstarter in their store. Hey, why don't you try out this one? Tell me which one you like and we'll get you connected to that series, you know? Nice. I guess, what is it that you really do? Okay, so like once you green light one of your own books or you be, like you start a project, what do you sort of do from start to finish to promote it or market it or like get it in front of as many eyeballs as possible? Hmm. I, I mean, it's, it depends on what I'm doing. Um, one of the things that I learned early on, um, the biggest things that when you find new creators, their their biggest fear is I don't want to share too much. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, my logic there is I don't care. Nobody cares. <laughs> like, like the people, you're not big enough that your spoilers matter. Like you, you need to promote everything. So I share as much as I can. Yeah, for like, sure. Most of the time you could probably see my whole issues before they're printed. Yeah. If you, I don't ever post it all in one spot. Like I'll post like, here's a page on Twitter. Here's a page on Facebook. Here's a page on Instagram. But if you are following me on every social media, you have read the book or seen all of the pages probably before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the things I do. The second thing is just um, be real and honest. I, I think honesty is one of the things that are missing in this, you know, world is honest and true. So I try to be, when I do like a newsletter, I, I don't have it be like, this is my top 10 favorite things. And I know that works for some people, but it doesn't work for me. It's better to just be honest. So I talk about vulnerabilities and I talk about struggles to try to make this happen and i talk about the positive when it when it goes to that it's trying to reach out and that it seems to be working well to me the other thing is is connecting with creators helping creators out i i try to build a vast network of creators that will help and share my my stuff out um it's it has its good and bads you know sometimes i look at it it's like this is this is uh 50 creators and only 100 real backers or readers but but it, it also has its good values too of those guys are all advocates of me and will buy all my stuff and share my stuff too. So it goes both and forth, but I try to be a, a avatar for good in the community. I was going to say like you, if you were to say that you like where you're, I guess like where you're a leader in this space, it is kind of like you are, you kind of rule your own universe of the indie creator community. I feel like, uh, right. uh so like, and we all support whatever you or anybody a part of that community does. Um, but that's what's, that's what's so hard is like the, the actual readers are so hard to get, <laughs> you know, right, it's like, yeah. there's no one plate. It's, it's like, we could like, you've, you personally have sort of gathered the creators in one space or, or at least a certain like subsector of creators. Um, but yeah, when it comes to actually trying to get readers, the only thing I found that works is like you have to somehow niche down every aspect of your story and try to go to each one of those subcultures. You know, I had to go directly to uh, like with it eats what feeds it. I you know I had to join the supernatural horror community, so I had to basically fill myself in on the lore of all these women that read stories about you know vampires and mermaids and how you know like and uh werewolves and stuff like that so that i could sort of immerse myself in their world and then sort of introduce like i have something similar that's a taboo romance um or or just you know so i've or like you know cyberpunk or just really super niche down to just like outside of comics where it's like i i learned that from basically what trying to make films that's how like uh like no budget and low budget filmmakers market is they're like you can't just market to other indie filmmakers you have right. to go Get to <laughs> this yeah the, yeah you have to go to the people the local markets you have to so you have to break out of that community so that's what, so it's like with comics I can get a lot of screenwriters to pay attention. I can get a lot of the filmmakers to pay attention. I can get a lot of people that are into then each niche of horror to pay attention, video games to pay attention because you're a novelty in their space. Right. You know, if they're all about you know, Tomb Raider and then I come in and be like, I have another hot girl that is, you know, crazy. They're like, oh, this, what's this? And everyone... Uh, 
I feel like people kind of want to be a part of some new thing that might, it, it, it's just like music where like, if you, if someone introduces you to good music that nobody knows about, it's cool. But as soon as it's, you know, becomes mainstream, it's not cool anymore. Everybody wants to be a part of something that's new and cool. And if you well, can sort of put yourself into that universe, yeah, that's how I do it. Absolutely. And I mean, that's, you know, one of the things I do, you know, I, I shared about how much I read comics, you know, I am part of one of my communities is part of those podcasters that don't care about any comics, but they care about mainstream comics. I am welcome there because when I have an interview there, I can tell that uh, we can talk about what came out every week, which I know from hanging out with any creators, that is not, that is not the norm. No, that is yeah. 20% of us. Most of the people can't. And it's not because they don't want to, it's because they they have certain things they like or they just want to support indie because they're mad at Marvel and DC or whatever, because there's all a plethora of reasons. But when I get there, I'm them, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I am I am them, I'm one of them, and I actually care about this medium just as much as they do. So I, I get a good push there and I get a lot of support there. And they have they are they are great advocate advocators for me going. This guy's legit. He's not just trying to take from you because there's so many people, even in the creator communities who will jump on. I don't see them for four months and they'll jump on. Oh, I have this great thing. Or they'll, they'll tag on my stuff. They don't actually ever back anything, but they'll put signal boost or they'll like, they'll do all these ridiculous things, but they don't actually care about the community, right? They care about you paying attention to their thing to, so that you can back stuff. Yeah. They're, they're, not, they're not trying to boost everybody, but their self. And it becomes a it it becomes a problem really uh, yeah, because I I don't like that <laughs> yeah and they're like and they're always getting mad why don't you support me as much and you can't say because you are just here to take you're not here you're not here on a Tuesday where we're just giving tips on how to do stuff you're not in a Discord posting the latest con you know you said about my Discord I I post comic news and we debate it like there's people who agree and disagree you know heavily on there we all discuss it in various levels uh to try to get better at this craft versus someone who only shows up to that in the section that says post your kickstarter right and then yeah. when their kickstarter is live they'll post they're not part of the community they're they're just uh they're just a person who wants to i wouldn't say take from the community because they create there's people who, who don't create try to take you'll get them every time you launch a kickstarter they'll try to boost your numbers and help you but uh they, they're they're people who are are not all in that's what i one of the biggest mind-blowing things to me whenever i got into this space more seriously was like whenever i started before i even attempted to make a book i basically mapped out all the options of what i was going to do like how much I thought I could make, how I was going to sell it, how I was going to try to build people. That's why I took the comics launch course, you know, right. to learn these <laughs> things. But there's so many people. Once I like jumped in, you realize like there's literally thousands of people that are just making books and then trying to just, just go live with it and get everybody to be a part of it. And like, that's mm -hmm. it. They didn't do any prep work at all. They didn't build, they didn't try to become a part of the community. They didn't think about the long-term time horizon. They don't have it as a serious career, but they're mm -hmm. super, like, I'm sure you get people, I have people reaching out to me fairly regularly that are just get mad that I just don't like immediately just say, they'll just send me their book as a PDF mm -hmm. and be like, Hey, let me jump on your channel next week. Right. Sure. And I'm like, yeah. No, it doesn't work like that. It's like, <laughs> hey, it's not good enough. And it's like, and B, I need to something to talk about. No one cares about your story. No one cares about my stories. <laughs> you know, like my audience, like most of it that are watching these videos, they don't care about the stories I've written. They care about just like you. They care about you as a person. Yeah. You know, they care about supporting you and not your story. And they definitely don't care about the people I have on their story. They care about making this a career. If I was going after the people that care about stories, I would have a different channel. And so it's like, you should go after the people that, and that's what's it, like, you're more active in that realm where the people that are very adamant readers that care about mainstream comics and indie comics are not the same crowd as people that are watching you or I, how to level up as comic creators. They're told they don't care. It's so funny that it's just like, it's like that those are, 
the people that read comics don't care about making comics, which is interesting because it's the same with movies. I assumed whenever I was in high school that everybody wanted to make movies, you know, and it's like (laughs) true. It's like in high school, it was like I thought I was like to me, I was like Steven Spielberg is the Mozart of our time. You know, like to become a film director is the pinnacle of like achievement as a human being, like you is creating worlds, you know, or be, or even a writer or a comic creator is like, you're building worlds. You're the same thing as a God, you know, like, like why does not everybody want to do this? But no, most people that are watching movies or reading comics, they don't care about the people that wrote them. They just love the stories. They just are entertained. Oh, I do have it here. Yeah. I mean, for me, like, this guy right here, yeah, he's right here. Uh, like Dawson Leary, you know, from Dawson's Creek. I know it was a female show, but like, <laughs> that was me. Like I was like, I get this. Like this guy gets it. Like this is the one guy who's speaking to me. You know, Zach Morris on Save by the Bell. Slater didn't talk to me. You know, any of the nine hundred two one zero nines. I can't name any of them. They didn't speak to me. I didn't want to be Spike from Buffett. I didn't want to be. I want to be in Dawson. Like like I wanted to be able to just create and put art into the world. Like. So, so it's so fascinating when you find people who don't like for me, I don't know about you. When I went to film school, the someone who was like on the producer track, I was like, what? You just want to like get money to like do things. No, like you need to be the creator. Like if you're not the, you have to write it or direct it. Like there was no other job. Like, I don't understand what you're. Yeah. Why, why you know? I was the same way. I was like, I don't understand why that's actually why I didn't continue down that path. I was like, I didn't get into this to film the world because I, in St. Louis, like, to the pinnacle of a media job here is to basically be a videographer or editor or like a manager director for a big corporation and film in the world series or film in the professional sports teams or something like that, or at Fox or whatever. And I was like, weddings, weddings. (laughs) Well, that's like, if you're independent and you own your own company, that's like your peak there. But yeah, it was that, that was it. So I was like, I was like, I can either, uh you know go that path i was like but that's not what i'm doing i'm here to tell the stories that come out of my head if i'm i don't want to be the guy that's like just learning how to use cameras or whatever or telling somebody else's story like that that defeats the purpose of of being the god that i'm pretending i am you know like (laughs) uh but that's a i was going to kind of end on that on the note that what's interesting about this space not just comics or even just indie comics but really hollywood or entertainment in general is you then suddenly realize like now that we're adults and you realize sort of how the sausage is made and how money's made and how deals happen and what it actually means to you know sort of make it it, or you know and like this is my life as i create for a living i tell stories for a living as awesome as it is The big revelation for me was like, it's a very small world, Uh, you know, like we all like are directly associated with some of our heroes growing up, you know, and like I've worked with some of the creators that, you know, inspired me as a kid, you know, and and it's just like, we're there. And it's just like, suddenly just you realize like, it's, there's not that many people doing this, you know, and we really do have a big impact. Um, And you just don't see it while you're in it. You know, because whenever you're younger, everything's so much bigger and you see it as like there's big names and they're doing these big things. But whenever I was younger, even the indie names, people that were making independent music, local filmmakers and musicians, like they were a big deal to me. And someone that made a low budget film that I saw on a DVD, you know, like was a big deal. Someone make an independent comic that they somehow wrote found an artist or did themselves that's printed and it's in a comic book shops like that is equal to in my eyes to something that would be quote unquote mainstream and it's like now that you're in this world you realize like it's the the not it, it's like both like kind of mind-blowing to me in a positive sense uh like and and also at the same time sort of underwhelming in a negative sense where it's just like so this is it right <laughs> You know, like, like I'm, I'm doing it now. And then it's just like, so now, uh, that's why we do what we do now. Cause it's now, it's just like, okay, so now let's the, we're at a transitioning stage. I feel like in the world to where like 
YouTube to where we can talk about these things. Those didn't exist whenever we were kids. Right. I feel like if they did, you know, we would be doing what you and I are doing now. We're like the people that are trying to get into entertainment now, they're watching you and I on YouTube and we're still early and we're in. And I think that what's coming in the future, which we're already seeing now is everybody is their own empire, you know, and there, because there's no, there's nothing stopping you or I from getting enough funds and masterminds behind to make any project we want. If you and I were like, let's make a full blown anime series of mm -hmm. one of the things that you or I written or someone else yeah. that we know, we would be able to figure it out, you know, and that's what yeah. we're doing. You know, I, it, like as big as a project we want to go or small, we want, like we can all do it on our own and we can use the big names. If we want, we can get published or we can self publish. There's really nothing stopping us. The technology is all here. Yeah, it's it's wild to think, you know, I, I think about missionaries a lot, right? So back in the day, a missionary would be like, I I feel a calling to go to Peru. So they go to their church and be like, I feel I should go to Peru. But that church knows that these guys aren't that serious or or they know things about them, right? So they're like, maybe you shouldn't go to Peru. It doesn't happen and they, their dreams are crushed. And then some people's dreams are earned. Where today they 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 go to GoFundMe, they find a bunch of people to send in Peru. And then you find out they they did a whole bunch of horrible things in Peru because they probably should they probably should have been a gatekeeper, but there's not anymore. So there's their negative part of things. But then we talk about the positive where you know these things are so much easier to obtain than you think, right? The goals of our stuff, the people who are writing and creating and like live and love this stuff, you can tell the difference between that person who's just and you can tell it on a Kickstarter. I don't care how good their graphics are, you can tell someone's passion for a project or a money grab. You can just tell there's something about the way it is, the way it's presented, the way they tell the stories, the way they do stuff, you know, the way they they talk about things. You know, people, I remember big uh, a big deal. Someone's like, I can hire Chuck Dixon. And I know Chuck Dixon has some stuff now, but they like, I can hire Chuck Dixon. I was like, you could hire Chuck Dixon since 2000. He's been doing independent books. Like you have a list. You just have never paid attention to it because you were following him in DC. He's a work for hire. There's tons of these pros that you could get. You know, it's just money. Like, that's the only yeah. barrier from you to doing any of those things is money. But then sometimes when you get to this level, like you, I'm sure where you're like, I'm going to buy this cover from this guy. Oh, uh, let's say we'll use Todd McFarlane. I bought Todd McFarlane. He did a cover for me. That's amazing. Todd McFarlane cares about Spawn. So that Voodoo Nations cover that he did for me, he's never going to tweet about it, never going to talk about it. So it has very little impact compared to what Todd's into because we're following Todd. We're not following what Todd did at per se. Yeah. You know, yeah, that yeah. Make sense? <laughs> yeah. It totally makes sense. Yeah. It, it's, it's weird to where you you're, that's what we're learning now is what really has value. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what do people really care about? Cause what we, what it's, it's sort of, it's same with film to where it's just right. like, do you want to be, it's like, do you want to be on Netflix? I can get you on Netflix. You know, there, you can go through certain motions. It takes money. It takes, you know right. a star it's like or is it do you want to make money with your film because that's a right. separate thing do you right. want to win awards do you want to be in film festivals it's like uh, you kind of have to figure out like what is it that you what's your real outcome do you want a career or do you want you know a one like just to do is right. this just a passion project and you're you know it's like depending on the the direction you really want to go in the long run affects what probably matters right now Right. And we're all learning those things. We all make the same mistakes, I feel like. Yeah, and earlier this year, I, I have a great story. So earlier this year, I realized I was like, I was watching the Hallmark Channel. And I was like, oh my God, I could write, because I'm pretty good at writing romance. You know, it doesn't come up a lot with, with the action stuff, but I'm really good at, you know, if you look at my sims, because I was, again, Dawson's Creek and Kevin Smith, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of mushy stuff really good at that i was like you know what i could write a comic a graphic novel i have enough cred that because i know like four people in my circle who have hallmark movies so i was like it's not that hard like because i wouldn't know four people if it was that hard and they do so many of them i was like i could i could get my first option deal it's like oh my god it's really probably pretty easy so i just gotta make a graphic novel have to be 90 pages but then i thought about it i was like that is the worst plan ever Though I could get all those things, put the Hallmark channel in the back, it may get a little buzz in the comic stuff, but 
I will get no residuals from that. Hallmark plays those movies one time, right? Maybe yeah. twice, uh, you know, or it, and even if it's twice, it's only on that season. Because next year they have another 40 some on Hallmark Christmas movies coming up the pike for all, all these stuff. So you're not going to get that residual movie forever. So I was like, what's the point of doing that? Is it to just get the option? Because that was what my thought was. So I'm not going to do that because my goals are not to make all my movies, right? Yeah. So it's a simple grab. And I, if someone f- hears this and they, that's what they want, you can do that. But the, in the long term, it's not going to make you money. because You're not going to make a lot of residuals o- o- over time. The, the Hallmark thing will, will get a little buzz in the comic industry for a minute, but that's going to die really fast. So you're done. Like you, you, unless you really have a romantic Christmas story, like in your heart that you need to tell, don't, don't do the cash grab, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, you kind of want to do it. I feel it. I look at your mess. You're like, that's a good idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got that. No, yeah, the, you are right. And and that's, what's interesting about uh, uh, that was uh, something I was going to ask you is like, what are you doing now to try to get writing gigs and are you uh, writing anything like screenplays or television shows that you're working on as well? Like uh, aside from just sort of networking, like, do you have anything that you're doing? Like what to like, have you, do you have an agent or have you sought out an agent at all? Or do you even think they're worth any your time? Or do you reach out directly to publishers at all? Um, I, yeah. That, those are all great questions. So I started reaching out more and more this last couple of years. I wanted to get a couple of trades in the in the in the tank first, you know, before I did that. I don't think that that's necessarily the best plan by reflecting on it, you know, but that was my my idea. I was like, oh, if I do a few trades, because I have noticed the people who do well on Kickstarter, which I think it does infect the direct market, are long form storytellers. Because in fact, long form storytelling is probably easier on Kickstarter than it is in the direct market, right? If you wanted to do a 12 issue story, like Nightwolf, you know, he continues to grow. Rob Montari yeah. continues to grow. White Ash continues to grow. Um, and it's not that the books are are any worse or any better than anything else. It's just, it's, this is a series now you want to get involved. In fact, Todd McFarlane in a recent interview said, you need a 50, 50 issues of a book to, to matter in this industry. Like 50? Yeah. And, and I argued about it for a minute, but then I look at people like Dave LePan who did Stray Bullets. Like nobody was reading Stray Bullets. Like I was because I was a crime guy, but but very few people were reading Stray Bullets. The numbers were never high, but he never stopped. And then eventually Marvel was like, you're not going to stop writing comics, are you? All right, you must have a fan base. So come over here and do stuff. So I've started to realize that you just got to keep doing the thing. I wish I would have just done one thing and then pitched. So now that I have all these graphic novels, I pitch them around and I try to try to get part of publishers. I'm heavily pursuing Marvel, uh, trying to get to as many editors as I can in DC. Because that's my dream. Like, I'll be happy in life, man, if I write one of those crappy Spider-Verse characters, right? I have to create a, a variation of Spider-Man that doesn't matter. You know, that, that'll be happy for me. Like, Edge of Venom versus Venom character that nobody cares about. That I, my goal is I, I just want to write for Marvel and DC. Uh, it's always been my dream. That'll make me happy uh, because I'm going to keep doing indie forever. Like I want to tell my stories. Great to say punk. I'm never going to stop writing that book. As long as Patrick's going to draw it, I'm going to keep writing it. You know, um, I just decided to continue broke down a little bit. I know it's crime. I know crime doesn't sell well, but I love the series. So I'm going to keep doing some stuff. So those are things I'm doing. Um, I should hit an agent. I haven't tried that. I'm not sure if it's worth it. I know that it has had success for people, but I also know people who spend a lot of money and get nothing. So yeah. It's, I think, but, uh, I, it's one of those things where I, it's just like, like forming an LLC or something like it's right. just, it's one of those things that's just like, it's not really worth it until you're, unless you're already like you've crossed the barrier to where they're reaching out to you. You know, right. if they're reaching out to you about stuff, and I've never had any agent that reach out to me for me. They always reach out for something else I've done, you know, and every book I've done is in partner with the publisher, you know, so I can't, and it's just like, or even with like screenplays and stuff, they mm-hmm. want the property. They never wanted like work with me like ongoing. It's just like, oh, I guess I'm not that great of a writer in your eyes. You just like what I wrote because somebody else said that they thought it was cool. You know, it is, it is like a, a funny it's just like high school all over again it's just like a popularity game you're only cool if other people think you're cool 
Right. Well, and there's this, like, I, I have a talk right now with a new publisher that I'm going to do some stuff with. And um, he called me. He's like, one of the positive things about working with me is I'm going to make sure when we get that movie option that you can be a, get a producer's credit. So if they try to take your name off it. And I was like, I didn't even think they could take my name off. I, 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 I like I know it because I know enough about films of how often that happens. Yeah. But like, like for some reason, like that wouldn't happen to me. Like I didn't even think about that. I was like, wait, and that's a sales pitch. You're you're pitching me that I could still have the name on my book. Yeah, you, their pitch is <laughs> I'll make sure you don't get screwed over as bad as they normally screw people over. <laughs> right. I was like, that's your pitch. I, I don't feel confident. <laughs> like you're not swaying me. But yeah, so I um. Yeah, I've been like, I'm hesitant about what I, who I reach out to unless I already like kind of know that they know me. I haven't right. like blank cold emailed anyone yet um, with, with uh, at, at, in the comic world. It's interesting if I cold email someone and even high level people up in film or video games mm -hmm. and you for some reason that my credibility in, in comics is seems higher than, you know, it might be to people that are in comics. Right. So, <laughs> so like to them, they're like, Oh, okay. You're kind of a big deal in your world, you know? So they, they, for some reason I get more responses from people in those industries than I do the, from people in the comic industry, you know, cause they just, since they're not in this world, you know, when we're here, we're all judging you know each other based upon the relevance of somebody else you know and, and and it's just like but when you're not in comics you see everybody sort of on an equal playing ground as as if i can pitch myself well you know right but yeah so i it uh, um yeah maybe off camera or another time uh, like in the discord or something i'll reach out to other people like what other people are doing because it, it's kind of wild like how everything when you see somebody that gets like a really big break it's always so random it's all it's it's never just like an obvious like oh i reached out to him it's like no i was at this con right. i you know i did something or a lot of times it's someone that's super consistent that but uh you know like i reached out to this person and they didn't respond back but i you know happened to run into somebody else they knew and then they you know did this it's it's always serendipity you know it's never like something straightforward that you and I can mimic like, Oh, there's a database that I just, you know, I mass email these people. And... Right. And that's scary. Right. So it's, it's basically, if I went like, I can't miss this, I can't miss San Diego. Like, and there's this FOMO, like there's people who go to San Diego just to network. They have no books there. They can't afford a table. They just know because they don't, they don't want to be missed out on that opportunity. You know? And I get it. That's, that's what I was hoping to try to do more this year is actually get to physical conventions. Cause the few that I've been to, I, I, they did, they were a big deal. I ended up like running into people that sort of, you know, were important in the space, so to speak. Yeah. And, uh, and they, and it makes you seem like you're involved. It's like someone that's like trying to make movies that's in LA you know, right. or so it's like when you're at New York Comic Con doing your thing, you're like more solidified in the space because it's like this is what I do or something like that. So, but I I'm about at my time. Uh, All so right. I I definitely want to talk to you again or right. um about anything more. But before we go, so what uh what are you hyping now? Is it is Holiday Spirit still live? It's live for three days. So I don't know when you're gonna get this out, but it's live for three days. Which in Kickstarter world is Saturday. Uh, I'm not sure. This is two. We're recording this on a Tuesday. So <laughs> it's. Uh, uh, <laughs> I might get it out like the day after tomorrow and post it on Thursday. So I might get it on your very last day. Yeah, it's a, it's OK either way. Uh, but your holiday spirits and then right after that, we're going to go to Voodoo Nations. We haven't done a Voodoo Nations. I, it couldn't. You know, when you start doing these things and so many of them that you miss, uh, you miss time. You know, you can only do so many Kickstarters. So uh I missed it last year. It's been done for about six months. So that's going to be the first Kickstarter. Then we got a new broke down, got the hospice trade. I've got, a, I've got, I, I have 11 books hoping for, for next year uh, <laughs> on Kickstarter. That's not counting my direct market stuff. Wow. So uh, where, where's your main, do you have, a, I'm a part of your email list and I, I was going to talk about that. We're like, you, I read yours because it is sort of personal or whatever. Yeah. And I realized like, not many people read mine because mine's not it's just right. what i got going on 
And I realized like you have some that are like that. And I just skip past, you know, I'll look at the cover if you have an image and then I just skip down to when's it live or whatever. I don't really read in between. I realize like, that's why people skip it. Like, I don't, I, I need some kind of juice. I need some kind of emotional drive. It's the same with fictional stories too. You need something that people can latch onto emotionally. Otherwise they don't care. And it, but if you do it too much as well, like they, they start seeing, like they see it as a trick. It's not real. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, gotta and be that, genuine. You can't right, yeah. right. I the the worst part is I know about it, so I know the trick. Like I and I and I sometimes do it. Like this series that I did, you'll notice all three were right before a launch. So I did my emotional take, and then I had a launch because more people were paying attention to my email list. That stuff is it manipulative, yes, but it's also me telling a story. I I told it the way I didn't want to tell it. You know, yeah, both of it works. You know, it's it's part of, part of the game. But I didn't lie. I didn't say anything not true. I just waited to tell you, <laughs> you know? yeah and, and nothing <laughs> wrong with it only people that really pay attention see that as a ploy right. and those that right. know that as a trick you know right. they don't see it as something right. disingenuous so no one really cares yeah. um, I, I think they'd rather me write emotional stuff as often as possible so yeah for sure um, that's that's what i read uh otherwise yeah anyway i could talk yeah, about yeah yeah so, so yeah my sub stack is traviskip.substack.com uh, but yeah, we have a full slate of books next year. Uh, you know, get in touch if you don't know who I am. Uh, check it. If you have any questions or anything, or you want to join the Discord, let me know and we can figure it out. Is Twitter your main hub that you like? Is it where you promote, or do you have your own website? Or like, what's no. your main thing? Uh, Substack is my main Substack. thing. Substack, okay. Um, yeah, but I, I, I am active on Twitter and then I'm active on Facebook. Uh, but I handle, I find out I'm a different person on each. Like on Twitter, I'm very aggressive because Twitter's kind of aggressive. I'm a little aggressive. I'm promoting stuff. I'm getting involved in some debates where on Facebook, I'm very like, how can I help you? Let's all do this together. We're a community. You know? And you get weird. different, do you get like different people on each platform or is it all the same squad? No, I have, I have a different fan base on both. Oh uh, uh, yeah. I'm per the same, but it, yeah, it is funny that I get scared of Twitter. I wasn't on Twitter for a long, I didn't get on Twitter for real until it turned to X. Right. And that was like, right when everybody like, I don't know, it just got like, I was like, I don't know. It's like, whoa, this place is wild. People are mean on here, like constantly, <laughs> especially in comics. It's crazy. Well, I think it's because you and I come from Comics tri Tribe and Comics Launch. So yeah, so everyone's so nice there. Like, And we're all on Facebook, right? Yeah. We're all on Facebook and we all know everybody. Then you go on Twitter and you see these people and they're yelling at people. And I'm like yelling back and they're like, do you know who that is? No, I don't know who that is. He's done this, this, and this. Oh, shit. All right, cool. Because like, I know everybody <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, so that, I think that's why I'm on Twitter. I'll probably leave Twitter at some point too, but it was so impressive, you know, and I've met people who've changed my worldview, like Richard Fairgray. I don't know if you know him, but he, he did about 10 years in the, the book market, like just learning about the book market and how I don't take it seriously, even though it's beating comic numbers in records, like, but I can't name the guy who does Dogman or Underpants. I can't name those guys. If they showed up at a comic convention, I would rant and go, why is this guy there? Even though he outsold Jeff Johns and Donnie Gates. And all yeah, that, yeah. You know? That's a, <laughs> Dav it's Patel, so I think. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I think I, that guy's name is Dav Patel, who did Captain yeah. Underpants. Or whatever. That's crazy, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to do this again, because I could talk forever about, like, when we actually dive into like the industry and like right. selling and, and manga and like, we'll do a whole nother episode just on that stuff. But yeah, at, at this point I got to go back to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. You have a super interesting life. Um, and like when it comes to this world, it may not seem like it to you, but it's like those of us that pay attention, like uh, we're all behind you, man, uh, <laughs> like, you know? So like uh, keep doing what you're doing. Don't let anyone sway you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so yeah, on that note, your sub stack, Travis Gibb, I was going to make a funny, not really a joke or anything, but I looked you up on Google uh -huh. just to like find your website or whatever. And uh, the first thing that comes up is like a question that just says, what does Travis Gibb do? Right. Uh, <laughs> do you know why? Do you know why? No. <laughs> uh, so uh, my, I am 44 years old. Uh, there is also another Travis Gibb who's 44 years old who is related to Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees. Uh, and oh. we both we both live in Florida. So we get crossed 
all the time. Uh, you know that they had a reality show like Guess Who Your Father Is, like kind of thing. I didn't get the name of it, but it was like basically the purpose of the show was who's your father, and you, they had all the kids there, and you guess it. I got asked to be at that show no less than five times from producers, like because they just oh, think I am. And so that's I get hilarious. Every Christmas, hey, can you get your dad to sing for me on this? Like, no. Nope. Uh, so yeah, so we get stuff, and unfortunately, I kind of look like a BG too because they all have this. <laughs> which I think is a give trick. Like, I think it's no a way. Trick. Okay. Yeah. My, my mother-in-law does all the blood trays and she's like, I can't find that you guys related. I was like, we have the same last name. We are related. It may be way far back, but it's, we've got to be somewhere. Yeah. That's hilarious. But, yeah, but we both have this thing. So I get it a lot and I'm more active on social media than he is. So that's what it's for. It's not me. It's actually that other guy who actually doesn't do anything. He's he's done like one. He's album. just the he's son like, of a BG. He's a son of. Oh, a BG. what's funny is you come up and it says Travis what? Gibb is a comic creator. Yeah. Like, it's just like <laughs> so you, you got the the SEO benefit out of that name, I guess. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll leave it on that note. So uh, yeah. thanks a lot, Travis. I'll uh, keep in touch. And uh, thanks all a lot right. for coming on here and uh, doing all this. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime you need me for anything, let me know. Right on. All right. Peace out. It was good hanging out with you. Let's do it again, brother. Yeah, we'll do.